The customer process tends to fit within a department within the boundaries of our organisation. And so customer process is looked at really from the point of view of what is the aim of the department. So if we think about customer accounts or customer service, and the motivation of those departments isn't necessarily always the successful customer outcome for the customer. The motivation is often how quickly can we clear down the accounts, how rapidly can we answer the telephone, what are our abandon rates. Whereas if we're thinking about the customer experience, we're actually extending the scope of the process and the process is very much aimed at delivering a successful customer outcome. Okay, when we talk about where the customer experience starts, what we're really thinking about is well, what are we responsible for as the, the uh, actions and activities that engage with the customer. So at a, a theoretical level, the customer experience is everything you cause the customer to have to do. Well, clearly for most of us, that's beyond our brief. We live in departments, we live within divisions. So the customer really experience for ourselves starts at the boundaries of our departments, of our divisions. However, by looking at the customer experience of the process, we begin to redefine those boundaries. So that old idea that we had of replacing, the, knocking down the silo walls and things like that, they actually evaporate because as we extend ourselves out through the customer experience, we begin to see more of the process we need to control. Indeed, if you're thinking about the customer experience and where, where the boundaries really lie, is if you were an airline, for instance, you might actually start thinking, well, where does the process start? Does it start when somebody buys a ticket, and then it, does it end when they get the bags off the carousel? Well, an outside-in organisation would say, no, the customer experience actually starts when you're thinking about the need for a trip, and it only ends when you're back at home having a cup of coffee. So that's the extent of the customer experience. Now, of course, within that, there's a whole gambit of things for an airline in terms of getting to and from the airport, uh, getting the bags checked in, all the, the standard stuff. But then at the other end of the trip, getting back home again, you know, making arrangements to actually uh, travel from A to B, whether it's car hire, rental, taxis or whatever. Now, the outside-in organisations uh, will specifically look at those processes and seek to get control of them, not in, a, in an autocratic way, but in a way that adds benefit to the customer and to the organisation. Okay, I mentioned airlines. A terrific example would be perhaps the th sort of thing that Southwest Airlines are doing. And traditionally, we would have thought of them as being in the business of flying aeroplanes. You know, that would be the classic inside out way of thinking, of the industrial age thinking of, uh, of a, a normal airline, if you want to put it like that. However, Southwest said, no, it's about the customer experience. And so we're really in the business of moving people. Now our processes start when people need to move and, and they only end when people are getting back home. So let's just take one component of that is, for instance, what a lot of us do is travel a lot, so we stay in hotels. And typically one of the uh, moments of truth we experience is when we're checking out of the hotel. Now you might think, what's that got to do with an airline? Well, in Southwest's uh, thinking, that has everything to do with the airline because as you check out, and usual questions, did you have anything from the minibar? Yes, just a couple of things, that sort of thing. As you check out and then the clerk says to you, thanks very much, have a nice day, bye-bye. What do you do with your bags for the day? Do you leave them with the concierge? Do you take them with you to your place of business? And then collect them in the evening for the airport? Well, either way, it's inconvenient. So Southwest said we could fix that moment of truth. What we could do is in collaboration with a hotel chain, in this instance Marriott, as you check out from the hotel, they'll actually let you check in for your evening flight. And you go, well, great, that's fantastic from a customer service point of view because now I can arrive at the airport, ticket in pocket, I've no need to join the longest queue in the airport, it's now always the fast bag drop queue, I can go straight through security. So that's great from a customer service point of view. It's even better for Southwest because it significantly reduces the cost. Now, how does it reduce the cost? Well, a, a, a big component in the airline industry is processing bags. And as we all know, as customers of airlines, they lose bags. Right. And so what Southwest have got already is the best record for non-bag loss in the US. Now, how do they do that? Well, quite simply put, if you've checked in for your flight as you're checking out of the hotel, they come and collect the bags from the hotel 
get them into the airport service way, way earlier than anybody else. So the bags are already for loading on the aeroplane way before anybody else. So they don't get lost on the carousel, they don't get lost on the conveyor belts. They're actually ready for boarding the aeroplane. So in doing that, Southwest have reduced the cost of baggage handling because they can negotiate a rate with the airports to pay a lower cost because they get the bags at a quiet time. So costs come down and service improves. And, and ultimately, if you and I are making a choice, do we fly Southwest in which case I'm going to stay at that hotel because we know we can check our bags in. It produces revenue and, and wins that, that fabled triple crown, reducing costs, growing revenues and enhancing service simultaneously. Well, the, the, the point of thinking about the customer experience is that you might say, oh, it's, it's got massive scope, you know, it, it's too, too, too far for us to go too quickly. But if you start with the, the area that you're responsible for, the projects you're working on, the departments, the divisions that are managed, you can actually define very clearly who is your customer. So in the first instance, it's more than likely going to be an internal customer. So have you really clearly identified who that is? And most of us say, oh yeah, yeah, of course we have. We know we deliver service. But have you actually figured out what the measures of success around a successful customer outcome look like? And I'll give you one example though, is frequently we'll go and ask our internal customers, what do you want? And if we're in IT, we'll then go and build a system, we've signed off the business requirements, having you know, signed it and then we, we deliver it. Uh, and the, the customer says, well, that actually, it's okay, but it's not really what I needed. The point there is that if you start thinking of the customer experience and you start thinking of it in that context, if you clearly define what the successful customer outcome looks like, you can attach metrics to it. And the discovery there, and I think it goes back to the, uh, the discussion that Henry Ford uh, once said, which is if we go and ask customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. So we have a responsibility in terms of owning the customer experience to actually define the customer need, even when the customer doesn't know that themselves. So you would start within your department, within your division, within your organisation, who is the customer and what is their successful customer outcome. Okay, uh, the, the question about whether you're focusing on the right customer or not is a very important one because sometimes people will say it's a given, we've got the customers we've got, we just have to process them. And that's not always the case. So even if you're in a public sector organisation, say you're the IRS or you know, some such service as that, you have a choice about how you process customers. It's not the same for everybody. So that's the first thing to notice is about categorisation. And, and I draw a distinction though when I say categorising customers as opposed to segmenting them. Segmenting them is an inside out view uh, of a marketing way that we go out to our market. Categorisation is really sort of saying is which are the categories of customer that we want to do business with and making that choice. Now for organisations who can make that choice you can very deliberately target certain categories of customer. You don't have to treat everybody in the same way. And there's good examples of organisations who've done precisely that. And, and of course, we, we have to drop in the conversation, the Apple and the Googles, because that's, that's what they do. They target specific customers. So if you think about the Apple experience, now, you know, I'm great, I love an Apple. I've got every Apple device under the sun. Uh, however, there's some of us who would say, I don't like Apple because it locks you into iTunes and so on. Well, they don't fall within the category of customer that Apple's pitching to. So by definition, your experience isn't going to be one that is as satisfactory as somebody who actually fits in within that profile. So again, going back to the departmental level, who is the customer, what is their SEO, and is everything we're doing within our department, within our division, contributing to that success? If it isn't, that's potentially dumb stuff and you can stop doing it. Okay, the, the, the challenge of getting everybody to think about the customer experience of the process is an interesting one because if you come from a dynamic of inside out where we've rewarded people for effectively turning up and acquiring skills and competencies, that's not necessarily aligned with the successful customer outcome. So outside in companies have, had, have taken that a step eventually, and it's a, it's a level of maturity that you get to, which sort of says, how do we truly reward people for achieving the SEO? How do we link the success of what they're doing at a day-to-day -day level with that customer success? And of course, by definition, that will potentially change the reward structures. Now, the development of an SEO map, for instance, includes the development of some key performance indicators, which are measures of process success. And, and I don't mean the traditional measures of process success, elapsed time, touch time, and those things. I'm talking about, are we truly delivering what the customer needs? Now, if we reward people for doing that, in other words, are the, have you got optimised moments of truth? So any interactions you have with your customer, 
are they moments of magic or are they moments of misery? We want to eradicate the moments of misery, we want to get rid of those, we want to get them out of the game. Now in doing that of course the process itself becomes much leaner, becomes much tighter, becomes much more focused. So the reward structure can change to represent uh, that, that, if you like, mechanism.